first place, and that's next weekend. Next Saturday at 3.30, we'll have that game against the Lumberjacks from Flagstaff. Looking forward to that trip. But a lot of football left and business to be taken care of here. Seegers from the one. Right side, he cuts it up. He's over the 20 to the 22. Well, I'm fortunate enough this year, Tom, to coach with a pretty good ex-Bobcat receiver named Ari Gray. He's up uh, coaching on our staff this year, and uh, so we're going back and forth with each other quite a bit with this uh, Grizz Cat stuff, but all right, all right, Ari Gray. I'm, I'm cheering for the Cats today. Mike Callahan would be glad to hear that, too. Of course, Mike, <laughs> great linebacker from uh, uh, the Bobcat program in the 80s, and he joins Grady and I for the Cat Grizz game each year, and I've got to just play referee between the two of them in the booth here. Got to make sure we call that the Grizz Cat game, though, Tom. Uh, okay. <laughs> Waller with the carry. No gain. The second and long for Montana on their opening possession of the second half. The Grizzlies actually did okay running the football in the first half. Unfortunately, a lot of sack yardage uh, put that total down to just 51, but close to 100 yards from the running back position. So Grizz able to establish a little bit of the run game. Uh, actually, though, you've got to give Portland State some credit. They come in giving up a lot of yards to the rush, and they've done a pretty good job today containing this Grizzly running game, which is leading the big sky in yards per game. Fake the give. Oaks on the rollout comes back across the middle, and Dane Oliver couldn't hang on in and out of his hands. I think Dane was a little surprised that Craig threw it. A lot of folks thought he might run it there, and he did a nice job of getting rid of the ball. You can see uh, pulling underneath, they actually had another receiver who wanted to get in the pattern but didn't. And Craig pulls the trigger. Dane's a little bit surprised by that. Well, I think Tua Telly might have just got a finger on that and just deflected it a little bit, which kind of caught Dane by surprise, and I think that's the reason Dane dripped up, dropped that. He does not drop very many. Go, 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 go. Third and long. Oaks letting it go for Seegers, and he overthrew him as by a mile. Fourth and Montana. long. And that will bring in a punting situation, and in comes Tyson Johnson. Tyson Johnson's had a great year as a true freshman. Well, whether you whether you win that coin toss at the outset of the game and elect to defer, or whether you lose the toss, when you get the ball to start the second half, man, it makes such a statement when you can come out, put a great drive together, especially when you just scored it to take a bigger lead, as the Grizz did. If they could put a drive together and go down, it would have been huge. But Portland State's defense does a nice job, stops them three and out. Good kick. Dallas Salva can't make the tackle. Up near the 30, 31, 32-yard line. Brendan Farino, 43-yard putt. Farino takes it back to the 33. And that's where Portland State will begin. And I made a statement earlier about the great job recruiting in the freshman class that Joe Glenn and his staff that left to Wyoming did. But you really got to credit Coach Houck and the new staff coming in and utilizing these freshmen. And as you mentioned, Tyson Johnson just doing an outstanding job stepping in as a, as a punter this year. Yeah, Coach Houck said he's one of the best freshmen he's ever seen uh, in his career punting the ball. He thinks if he continues to develop, he may have a pro, pro opportunity. Out of the eye. All kinds of time for Weiser. Cross the middle, and it's flat dropped in the secondary, in and out of the hands of Matt Lebsock, who would have had his first uh, career interception, and he dropped it. Well, we talked about freshmen doing a good job. Matt's one of, of, one of those, and uh, he was in the right spot. He's still talking about it. Got his hands on his head. It was right into his hands. Well, I tell you, interceptions are so hard to get anyways, especially at this level. And when you have, when you get a gift, I mean, Weiser, I'm not sure what he's reading here or what happens, but he flat throws the ball right to Lepsock. You'll see it here. I don't know if he's just high or if he makes a bad read, but he, he just throws it right to Lepsock. And I'm not sure what happened, but, boy, Matt's going to regret that one for a while. I think he thought Lepsock was wearing white. It's the only reason, the only, only possibility. Fuquay. Spinning off tacklers near the stick. I believe he's going to be a half yard shy. Fuquay, good run up the middle on second and long and third and short uh, coming up. Grizzlies came with a blitz that time on both sides of the ball, and uh, Fuquay did a nice job running, beating the blitz and getting a first down. Excuse me, first down. He did get it. That was a good job by that Portland State offensive line of picking that stunt up, opening a hole for Fuquay. And as you mentioned earlier in, in the half, Tom, he runs really well.
straight back. Weiser dragged down, but he gets it away to Fuquay, and he's in the open field where he's dangerous to the 36. Someone had a hold of Weiser's ankle, and we check out the scores from across the Big Sky Conference. Montana State locked up with number 10 NAU in Bozeman. What's happening with Idaho game. State and Weber State? Whoa. Weber at home is putting it to the Bengals. That's a surprise. 16 to nothing. Of course, Idaho State has just one loss in the conference. That'd be a big loss for them. And it'd be a good thing for the rest of the clubs trying to catch NAU if Weber can hold on. Looks like Idaho State a little uh, flat after coming off the big game with Montana last week. Well, there was a stat, too. The last, I think the last three teams that have beaten the Grizzlies in conference have lost their next game. So obviously those teams do whatever they can to get up to play this excellent Montana team. And then the next week, there's obviously a little bit of a letdown from that. After the play, personal foul, offense, number 77. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play, first and 10. For the Vikings, by virtue of the long pickup by Fuquay, Net the first down, penalties dead ball, and that's why it's assessed afterwards. They back him up, but still a first down because it came after the play. You know, Coach Huck talked about the team and what a bad week it was coming off a loss, but he did mention he felt the team was still on the upswing. He felt they weren't in a declining situation, and he felt they'd come back today and, and finish the season strong. Joel Robinson comes on a blitz, got cut down initially, but then got up on his knees to help make the tackle. What a great play from the senior middle linebacker, uh, Joel Robinson, to bring down Ruben. You're right, player. Bob. Coach Howe talking with him this morning. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely disappointed that you lose that game last week at Idaho State, but he still felt like they improved the and like line. they've improved every single week this season. And, you know, you, you don't feel good about a loss, but you still feel good about your team's progress uh, and continuing on in that drive to win the conference, get into the playoffs, and pursue a national championship. Montana's back to their usual defensive formation. They came out of the nickel. Ball is ruled incomplete. Incomplete is the call as Whitehead uh, looked to maybe, maybe not have it. Took a hit from Dave DeCoit and uh, the official rules incomplete. It looked like he took a couple steps after the catch here. Uh, we'll see here on the replay where well, the fans got after it pretty big, which you'd expect, but it looked like he took a couple steps and then the ball came out. I think it was a fumble. Well, I think if we had red hankies again, Tom, we might be throwing them. But Weiser does a nice job again of facing the blitz, coming right at his face, making the appropriate hot read. And boy, that might have been a catch and a fumble. There's got to be nothing more that these officials hate than the Grizz Vision Jumbotron. <laughs> Each close call is shown on a 32 by 20 screen. Weiser back with time. Let's it go. Looking. For Jay Williams, but he's overthrown. Weiser got planted after he threw the ball that time, but actually they had a real nice pass down the field, just a little bit overthrown. See if you can see the sack or the hit after the ball's away. He does take a big shot. Pretty good protection by Portland State, though. They, the Grizz again ran another twist at the end. Tim Bush will slant inside. Both backers and safety Dave DeCoy are going to come off the outside and picked it up pretty well, but were able to get a shot and just force Weiser to throw it a little bit long. is in for the Viking. We talked about those key penalties too, Bob, after a real big uh, pickup and a good play by Weiser to get that one ball off. Big penalty brings it back. Seegers, after a 43-yard punt, with a short return, and there's a flag on the play. Yeah, you can see a clip. It was a real close call, and it was just a brush. But, uh, you know, the way the rule reads, you cannot hit a guy in the back, and the officials right there, they're going to call it. That is the case, is the preliminary signal from our head referee. Seegers is so good back there. It has to be hard to block for him, though, actually, because he does so much activity that you're trying to stay with your guy. And as he dances and jukes and jives back there, it's got to be tough. The to illegal block him. in the back above the waist on the run back on the return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. We'll take a break. Monty, look out. There's a bear in the stands, Grizzlies, 27. 
the Montana offense. Uh, it's been all right today. Nothing, you know, outstanding to talk about. 138 total yards. They've given up four sacks, which have, which have taken a lot of yards away. Uh, four big sacks. But Craig Oaks has had a nice day uh, completing passes. And they give straight ahead. And good blocking out of that interior. Guys like Decker and Jay Green getting it done up the middle. Yeah, that's just that bread and butter zone play that the Grizzlies run so well. And if your old linemen are all stepping into their zone gaps that they're trying to control and the running back's making the right read, boy, you hope you can get four to five every time with that play. And right there is a good example. They pick up seven on first down. Justin Green now, the lone tailback again behind Oaks. It's Colt Palmer going in motion. Green, not a whole lot, maybe a half yard, if that at all. Should mention, you see Colt Palmer in the game, and he's going in motion in that tight end, uh, almost quasi-H-back uh, position. Brad Weston not playing today, as we mentioned off the top again, uh, with the foot. And Blake Horgan, another guy, Montana's defensive tackle, not going because of an ankle injury. Coach Houck said today, you know, anytime you got a bunch of uh, players trying to learn a new system like these guys obviously are, there's a transition period. And I think it's been hard for the Montana fans this year, been a little bit impatient, and maybe sometimes they don't realize that guys like Lavander Seegers and all those receivers are trying to learn a brand new system, and that takes some time. And then when you add some of the injuries that the Grizzlies have had, all those things factor in sometimes to uh, the things not being as smooth as we'd like them to be. Kind of like that play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice segue. Steve Shinen. Makes the play. Oaks tried to give him a stiff arm. Shining was having none of it and a big loss. And uh, the Grizzlies are going to have to uh, punt from around their five, own five yard line. You know, line. this is another well conceived play, but Shinen has blitzed three times, maybe four times now from his strong safety position. And Oaks has failed to see him come up in the box and stunt. I think if Oaks can see him and make the appropriate check, he can get out of that play. That's a tough play to run when the strong safety's blitzing off of the corner. Marino at the 46 of Montana, waiting to punt from Johnson. Not a good one. Tyson Johnson has only had a couple of those all season, and, and they're magnified. A bad kick is magnified, of course, when you're doing it from your own end zone, as that one was. But he has been solid up until this point. But Portland State, now we talk about Montana getting chances. Here's a chance for the Vikings to do the same thing. Only 24 yards on the punt uh, from Johnson. And, it, and they really need to convert here. Even a field goal will get them back in it, uh, you know, 20 to 7. So a field goal will be important. We'll be back. Vikings taking over. Great field position off of the punt. We're back. 20 to 7. And from the 29-yard line is where the Vikings will start this drive. Double tight end formation. Straight ahead to Fuquay. And Fuquay has not been able to get himself on track today. That's his 11th carry. He's up to 53 yards on the game. Again, we want to say hi to everyone across Montana watching this ball game, this Big Sky football game on the Montana Television Network. KPAX in Missoula, KAJ-TV in Kalispell, our affiliate in Great Falls, KRTV, KXLF in Butte. Helena's KXLH. They watch in Bozeman on KBZK and, of course, Q2 in Billings. Second and ten. Deontay Taylor split to the near side. And that's the man, Taylor, to the 12, to the 10. And he stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at about the 12-yard line, but it's a first down for Portland State. Well, you wonder what adjustments are obviously such a key in football and what coaches go into the halftime uh, hut and locker room and what adjustments they make. The Grizzly run defense, again, has been very, very solid as they have been all year. And uh, the, the secondary was pretty solid in the first half as well, but it looks like maybe Portland State might come out and go to the air a little bit more this half. Well, we thought they'd do a lot of throwing throughout the game, but they did run the ball quite a bit in the first half, and it looks like that might be one adjustment they should make. First catch of the game for Deontay Taylor set Portland State up at the 13. Fuquay. Brian Fuquay with the carry. Gain of two. Give the Grizzly defense a lot of credit there. They just swarmed to the ball. I think there were nine, nine uh, maroon shirts in on that tackle. Everybody was there canceling out and making a play. 
you talked earlier, Bob, about Coach Houck being so pleased with his defense and their, their toughness, their intensity, and they do. They've got a unit of kids that just play so hard. They don't quit. They finish every play. They rally to the football. They fly around, and that's, that's how you have to play defensive football. Robinson to the top. Taylor to the bottom. Joel Rubin in the backfield. He's the safety valve. Weiser throws it away. Smart play from the junior quarterback. Yeah, I sure like this Weiser kid. I can see why he's having such a great year. You know, in this game, Tom, I really think he's made better decisions. He has thrown 12 interceptions on the year, and I know they're not happy with that. He's thrown five in the past couple games. He does have one today, but, boy, I like the decisions he makes. He's able to make people miss right there. He gets out of the pocket, doesn't see anybody open, so instead of forcing it, just throws it away. He makes mistakes in bunches. Coach Walsh, when I talk, got a chance to talk to Tim Walsh yesterday, said, I'm happy with his play 95% of the time. When he makes mistakes, they seem to come together. He did throw, at one game this year, he threw three interceptions in one quarter. But besides those, uh, those, those moments, he has been very solid in his debut season. And here he is again on the rollout. And nowhere to go. Comes back across the middle. Touchdown, Portland State. Back across the middle, and it was Deontay Taylor. A lot of that was to his credit. I mean, he rolled out, surveyed the field. Nobody's open. He gets some pressure on the corner. And then watch what he does right at the end. He backs up just a few steps and makes that play. Just a fantastic athletic play by Weiser. Shows good arm strength there. He's falling back, as you said, Bob, and still able to get enough on it and place it accurately for the touchdown. Portland State pulls to within six points on the reception. The touchdown by Deontay Taylor. We've got a good one brewing here in Missoula. We'll be back after this. Deontay Taylor's first touchdown of the year has pulled the Vikings back to within six points. Asked Tim Walsh yesterday, I said, what are you guys playing for? Have you talked about the possibility if you run the table on the rest of your games of getting an at-large an at-large bid to the one double a playoffs and he said you know tom we don't really talk about that and and then he kind of smiled and said but you know what if we did win them all we probably would get an at-large bid so it's definitely a goal for both these teams still seegers to the 20. And that's where he's taken down at the 22 23 yard line but it was kind of funny because you think about it there's so many teams right now in the conference that and it's no small task to win out in the in this league it's so good but both these clubs and that's why portland state is they're they're both playing still for their for their playoff chances no doubt about it so you got to give portland state's kickoff coverage unit a lot of credit today they have really bottled up this national leading montana kickoff return they've done a great job in at quarterback, Kyle Sampson. Oh, here's a new look for you. Well, we've new look today for sure. Give to Hilliard for the 30-yard line. I talked to Coach Houck about this and this morning, and just uh, as far as why would he still use it and if he's going to still use it and just his plans with it, especially with Craig Oaks continuing to emerge and, and improve and play so well, he said the thing that it does, if nothing else, is it makes a defense that next week just put that much preparation in, just getting ready for it. So NAU next week, they see this on film, a little bit of option, a little bit of Kyle Sampson. They have to prepare for it. It just takes time away in their defensive unit each week of preparation. The pitch back this time to Waller for no gain. And uh, Coach Walsh said the exact same thing, Grady, yesterday. He said, you know, we still had to prepare this week for the option because they showed they did run it last week, and that's exactly what the idea is. And then Rob Fennessy, Montana's offensive coordinator, said, he said, Tom, it doesn't take us any time at all anymore. Awesome. It takes us five minutes a week to, to run the plays and make sure we all still know where we're going, but it does take the, the time away from our opponents uh, as they prepare their, their game plan. Samson does such a good job of it with hell in the capital when he played there. He, I watched him run up and down football fields all year. A lot of double-A schools in Montana watch that guy run all over him. Waller first down on the option. Samson took a huge hit after giving it up. Uh, a real shot. And Waller able to pick up the first down. I don't know if you can see it. Sampson gets lit up by Dorsey in kind of a cheap shot. 
But uh, anyways, Waller with the first down yardage. Grady, you got to watch him last year a little bit yourself. So uh, <laughs> what, what was it like preparing for him on oh, your staff? I tell you, unfortunately, we had to play him three times in the last couple years, and he is just an amazing football player, a leader, makes things happen, plays so hard, tough kid, just really the essence of what you want as a coach in a football player. Well, having, having a dad as a coach, uh, as he does, I'm sure it instilled a little bit of that at a young age. Waller with a gain of seven on first down. Sampson stays in the game as, as the quarterback. Waller hasn't seen a lot of action in the past couple weeks, but doing a nice job today running the football for the Grizzlies. J.R. Waller was kind of banged up with an ankle injury, and uh, that combined with the emergence of, of, of uh, Justin Green as the premier back, uh, I think, in this offense. Seen him, and now the ball's on the ground as uh, two true freshmen trying to connect <laughs> on the option that time. And the pitch from Sampson uh, escaped Hilliard, uh, and it goes out of bounds. Montana will retain possession. Grady, how much did you run option at Flathead with uh, Lex? Um, I'm not probably known as much of an option guy. In fact, the coaches up there tease me about it. We put it in this year a little bit, and they were teasing me that it might be the first time they've ever seen us run it. Uh, no, we didn't run it very much up there with Lex. We were uh, just wanted to get the ball in his hand straight ahead rather than try to try to pitch it to him too much. Third and long, and Corey Proctor got an early start. Uh, might have been someone else. Skinner may have started too, but it was the right side of the line for Montana. It's going to be a false start. Speaking about Corey Proctor, we've seen him make a couple nice blocks this week. But last week... Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 75, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, still third down. Last week, Proctor was abused by Jared Allen from Idaho State, and I, and I asked... Um, line coach Dave Schramm about that this week. What was Corey's mood like? He said, you know, Corey's the kind of kid that can bounce back pretty quick, but it was an education for him. But Proctor's pretty good, but Allen put one on him last week, so it's going to be a big week for Corey Proctor to get some confidence back, I think, uh, that he may have lost a little bit up. Oaks with nowhere to go, trying to escape the heat, gets it away. And I Oaks shows great athleticism and, again, speed to get out of the pocket and avoid the big sack. Well, give the Vikings credit here, though. They stop Montana, and they should end up with good field position. Even right here, as you see on the replay, though, I, I'd still like to see Craig step up into that pocket. Instead of spilling to the right, I don't feel like he really, it didn't seem like he had to spill to the right. Sometimes you actually take yourself really into the rush. If you'll just step up in the pocket, that with which the O-line is trying to create for you, you'll actually have more opportunities in there than trying to spill out to the right or to the left. A short kick from Tyson Johnson. And it looked like it may have touched a Portland State player, Jason Dallas Alves, picked it up and he has taken it in. Now, that will not be a touchdown. That's a muffed punt. The Grizzlies will retain possession. They will take over where Dallas Alves first touched it, if indeed it did touch a Portland State player. But there will be no touchdown on this play. You're right, Tom. That it's is a muffed the, punt. Yeah, that is the rule. You cannot advance that for a touchdown, but. But De La Silva has been all over the field today on special teams, especially on punt and cover. He's made some great plays. Here's just another example of that. The Grizzlies are going to get the ball back. Again, De La Silva is the transfer from, uh, from UConn and uh, has, has been a quiet role player on special teams. He did, does have one interception, too, uh, as well on this season from the defensive backfield. Ooh, let's see what we got here. It was ruled on the field. The receiving team was blocked into the ball. Therefore, he was not deemed to have touched it. It's first down and 10 for the receiving team. Well, there you have it. The ball will stay with Portland State. Of course, if a player is blocked in, see if we can pick it up. Well, yeah, it might be. You can see the Portland State player on the ground at about the 38-yard line. Look like... He was, maybe Willie Walden was on top of him. Let me pick it up right here on this angle. Might be a good piece of refereeing right there. They're both well, kind of Well, Willie Walden has taken Reynard Carey down to the ground. Excuse me, that's not Reynard Carey. That's number two. Nick Chenault. Either way, that's the call. First and ten for the Vikings. Fuquay. 
You play the ball carrier. Gain of a yard and a half. Great play by Tim Bush right there, which we're so used to seeing. He takes on this counter play, spins off of the pulling guard, gets right back into the hole, makes the stop. Great play by Tim Bush. You'll see it right here. The right guard is going to pull, try to kick him out. He's going to spin off of that block and then fight inside to get, get part of the tackle. Second and nine. Whitehead and Fuquay in the eye. Myers coming on the outside blitz. They get it out to Brown. Brown makes Vernon Smith miss. Excuse me, Chris Clark miss, and it's a first down. And Chris Clark is a true freshman from Cathedral High School in California, number 10. Clark got his first bit of action on defense last week and had a tough start in the big sky as he um, was taken to school, if you will, by the Idaho State receivers, most notably Saleh Key. Uh, and Clark, again, here, not able to make the tackle but this is a very talented young man. They're trying to gain some experience for this true freshman, and now he's matched up again one-on-one -on -one with Brown at the top side of, this, of, the, of your screen. And Weiser picking on Clark again. He's going deep. Clark closes quickly, though, and breaks up the play at the last second, but again, looking for Brown, and uh, this time, Clark wins the battle. The Sun had a little bit of a little bit of factor in that play because he had a tough time locating the ball. The Grizzlies do a good job to catch up. They were out of position, and the safety rolls over and gives some help as well. Well, the one thing the coaching staff loves about Clark is his speed, and that's why he's out there because he's so gifted with the speed. And you saw it right there. He's five yards behind Robinson. He has the ability, or Brown, he has the ability to catch up and make the play. Definitely beaten at the point of attack, but that closing speed, that's, that's what got him recruited. A uh, big part of it. Weiser fakes a screen, wanted Fuquay back this way, and he throws it away. And again, the composure of Weiser to, to see that screen wasn't going to happen. But, but there is a flag, and they may be calling intentional grounding. And if they are, that's a bad call because he threw it to the feet of Ryan Fuquay. Maybe a personal foul, too, afterwards. We'll see how they call it. But it was a screen. Grady had talked about it earlier. They fake a little throw to the right. They come back with a screen underneath. And he reads that it's not there and then throws it away. But I think there was some activity after the ball's away that caused the foul. And that ball landed a foot from, from Ryan Fuquay. And unless this official is going to just make a judgment that he just knows he's throwing it away on purpose, so he's just saying, hey, that is just intentionally grounding. Well, that is a tough call. Looks like they might pick it up. Wave it off. There is no foul on the play. We have an eligible receiver in the area. It's amazing how many certified football officials there are that sit at Grizz games each week that, who get up and, and voice their opinion on each and every call. It was a good call. That was the correct call, I believe, there to pick that up and wave it off. Would you say close to 23,000 certified officials? Tom? That's about it, Grady. It's about 23,000 each week. <laughs> Third and ten. The lone back is Fuquay. Over the middle's got a man open, and it's caught by Ahmad Robinson, who went up, climbed the ladder, and took it away from the Montana Grizzlies number four, Dave DeCoy. Well, you gotta give Portland a lot of credit. They are hanging in this game. Some would you know say hanging around, but they are. They're they're mounting a drive here, and if they take a touchdown to the Grizzlies, he'll take the lead. Well, that's why Ahmad Robinson came into this game as the go-to guy. 29 catches and uh, 455 yards coming in. And today, that was his first catch of the ball game. 16 yards. Fuquay. Flag comes in late. So Robinson uh, was kind of ignored until now. And now Fuquay on this carry. But there's a flag. Oh, this looks like a bad injury as well, too. I'm going to call holding it. It looked like somebody got down to the legs. I believe it's Vernon Smith. Vernon Smith, it looks like. Portland State running that little counter play, which they've had pretty good success on all day. And tough to see right there in the replay, but... Yeah, I guess I don't want to jump to conclusions. It, it, it's either Vernon Smith or or Chris Clark. Yeah. No, that's Vernon. That is Smith and head, tra uh, head trainer Dennis Murphy uh, over the top of Murph. 
Murph's been the trainer here for a long time, and he will take good care of, of Smith. Holding offense, number 62. Since the run ended beyond the line and the hole was beyond the end, we take the 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. The hold was downfield, so instead of being a first and 20 uh, from the spot of the foul, 10 yards, it'll be now about first and just about 13, 14 yards. But Vernon Smith still down on the field, and Smith had his first interception today. A uh, guy who's a senior, a gifted athlete, one-on-one uh, -on -one coverage, Montana's best corner man, uh, no doubt about it. Well, speaking about injuries, too, there, Tom, you see Nick Vela, who has uh, come along so well and uh, at the middle linebacker spot, uh, also broke his hand and playing with a big cast. And last year, I know injuries were such a big key down the stretch for the Grizzlies. They just played so banged up, and it was amazing. They were able to keep that winning streak that they had going last year. Uh, this year, unfortunately, they've experienced quite a few injuries again. And it's just such a bummer because so many of them are just bad luck deals. Well, good sign uh, initially that Smith is able to get up and at least walk off the field. But, of course, that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, a lot of those injuries, if it... You know, who knows what it is. If it is a knee, uh, you can get up and walk off in the next day. He looked like he was have right, a major tear. So right arm or right shoulder is nursing that. Smith has had shoulder problems in the past. He broke his wrist two years ago as well. First and 14. Fuquay with a head of steam to the 30, and he's knocked out at the 25. Chris Clark, along with Andy Thompson, make the stop. Fuquay's looking better and better. You know, he's held in Denver check in the first half, but he's had a couple of real nice runs on this drive. Here's Second another down, one seven. as he kicks it outside. And, you know, if he gets a hot hand late, that may be a big factor for the Vikings. Well, and you see freshman Matt Lebsock fill in the alley right there, just unable to stop Ryan Fuquay and missing that tackle right there. So you need your safeties to come up and fill the alley. And when he missed, it let Fuquay gain an extra six or seven yards. Fuquay, uh, Fuquay 14 carries, 67 yards. Big hole. He is right at the stick. I believe he's got a first down. I'll tell you, Portland State really as a team in this second half has got it rolling. Their defense is playing very well. Offensively right now, they are moving the football with both the run and the pass. And you'd have to say right now the momentum has completely shifted to the Portland State Vikings. Seniors on this team have never beaten Montana. First down, and it's a short gain for a few Quay. A lot of the seniors on this club, uh, many of them anyway, were red shirts the last time that Portland State beat Montana. So they've never done it themselves. And uh, Benji Tucker, safety for the Vikings, said earlier this season, he said, I, I think I speak for a lot of my teammates where the, the game we want to win the most is, uh, is no doubt that game on October 25th in Missoula. I think a lot of teams around the Big Sky Conference feel that way about Montana. Absolutely. For the dominance the Grizz have had. Weiser. Complete to Curtis, but not a big gain. And Matt Lebsock with good, tight coverage. Yeah, there's a great play by Matt Lebsock. Grizzlies have brought that blitz in the face of Joe Weiser several times, and he's done a nice job of finding his hot read. Uh, Whitehead, he does it again right here. Blitz off the edge. He looks into it, throws to his hot read. This time, Lebsock is right there to shut him down for no game, really. Lebsock, who shared the double-A uh, defensive player of the year for high school football players last year, shared that with Kyle Sampson. <laughs> who was playing quarterback for the Grizz. So they got a couple of good athletes there. Tenth play of the drive for the Vikings. Third down, Fuquay. Not gonna get to the stick and there's a flag. I think we had movement before the play. Yeah, it'll be a procedure. That time you're blowing the whistle as the play develops. That's why you knew it was before the snap, trying to stop him in, in uh, midstream there. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 62. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, still third down. 
winning split the pot ticket is 0 well, in the first half, the Grizzlies really controlled field position, and the game was played pretty much in their end the whole time. And this this half, the Portland State Vikings have completely reversed that and have played the game on the Grizzlies' defensive end of the field. And so far, Montana not able to get a whole lot of pressure on Weiser. We're in the first half. Uh, they really did four sacks on him in the first half. Here comes Brett Myers on the outside. Fuquay picks him up. Back the other way. Oh, no incomplete. Holy cow. Would that have been a catch? Brown came back behind Lebsock and nearly made the fingertip catch for the touchdown, but it's no good. Official right on the call, too. It did look like he might have grabbed the ball, but I think they're going to say that he trapped it against the field as he went to the ground. I think this is, is this Tough Harris? Yeah, number 13, Tough Harris on the coverage there, and oh, you can see me, yeah. the ball clearly not caught by the receiver right there, but boy, Tough Harris, he's with him, just doesn't, uh, doesn't see the ball, doesn't pick it up. Almost a great catch by Portland State. Darn close. Flag on a play from 37 yards. Looked like it may have been blocked, but there is a flag on the play as the kick that time uh, didn't get off the ground very far. This is going to be one of those wish you wouldn't have penalties. Portland State's going to get another chance. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 17. The play never should have gotten off. Therefore, the kick didn't count. It's still fourth down. Those certified officials don't understand that call. No. In, in the stands, those, those ones you were talking about. Grady. He explains it so clearly, too. Well, that's, that's one where... Uh, Number 17, you're, you're happy he did that for you, so you get another chance at this. This is Matt Langford. Langford, who's been doing the punting and the place kicking now today for the Vikings. Langford in to attempt the field goal. Chris Clark, with, that, with all that speed coming off of the edge here for the Grizzlies, might have blocked it last time. See if he can get it again. From 42 out. No good. The knuckleball goes wide left. Great stand by the Grizzly defense right there. And they dodge a bullet that time. Portland had a chance to take the lead on that drive, and the Grizzlies toughened up inside the red zone and denied them. Their offense now needs to respond. They have just had a real flat third quarter, had a chance to come out and make a statement, getting receiving the ball at the start of the third quarter. Right now they need to pick it up as a unit and get something going offensively right here. the shotgun as he's been most of the day. Looking for Talmadge. That's intended Just to a bit too far. Craig has had a couple opportunities today down the field. They haven't thrown the ball down the field very much. As you said last week, Tom and Bob, they went down the field a lot more against Idaho State. But the couple times that he's thrown the ball down the field today, he's simply been inaccurate. He has Talmadge open right there. If he throws an accurate ball, that's a big gain. But he's just a little bit high and wide. Craig Oaks 0 for 4 this quarter. And the gift green. Not a whole lot going. Brian Salmon is standing by uh, on the sideline with an update on some injuries. Brian, what do you got? Well, Tom, I spoke with a trainer for the University of Montana. And he said that Vernon Smith, he did not injure that shoulder that he had surgery on this past offseason. He had a stinger, which affects the neck. He ran into John Cahill, who also had a stinger. So he's not sure whether or not he'll come back into the game. His symptoms are kind of going off and on. So I'll keep you updated on that. Back upstairs to you guys, Tom. Okay, thank you very much, Brian. That's uh, excellent news for Vernon Smith and for Grizz fans that it was not that shoulder. That's giving him trouble. Oakes going deep. Talmadge has got a step. On radar to carry, and he's got the ball. He's got a first down to the 25-yard line of Portland State. 
good patience exhibited right there by Craig Oaks. He got a lot of time. He didn't get impatient and spill out of the pocket. This is what I was talking about. A lot of times quarterbacks will get impatient and they'll just take off. He hung in there. He was very, very patient, and he found his man, John Talmadge, who is so good at going up and getting the ball at its high point, and that was the key right there. He didn't wait for it. He went up and got it. With a serious height advantage over there on that corner spot. Raynard Carey, barely 5'10". Talmadge is a good 6'4". And Raynard Carey is their most experienced DB. He has more starts than anybody in that secondary. But as you mentioned, I mean, you'd like to see him take advantage of that height matchup that they have a little bit more maybe with Craig or with uh, Talmadge. Green up the middle for two. Just green now, 10 carries, 38 yards. A big play, though, sorely needed by the Grizzly offense. Last week, there was plenty of them against Idaho State. Today, big plays have been few and far between. In fact, that might have been their first big play over 25 yards. Trip set to the near side. Walden, the tight end, on the left. They run to the right. Green. Gets low, and uh, when he puts the pads forward and gets low, he's tough to stop, and you ask him about that, and, and he says he relishes that kind of physical play, and he's a, a good blocker in the backfield, and he's done that too. A Viking player is down. That's number eight, the strong safety shining, who's been so effective on, on blitzes so far today. It looks like he gets dinged by his own player there, actually, but you're right, Tom. When Justin Green decides to go north and south, wow, does he go hard. You know, we've talked a little bit, too, about Montana's offensive line. They are just really physical up front. Uh, they've just dominated these guys at the point of attack. McFarland, Rhodes, Decker, and Skinner are really getting it done up front. I know Coach Hauk has talked about how proud he is and how, of their physicalness, and uh, he thinks that's a real advantage for this team. Well, they're really starting to gel, I think, too. There was a great article in the paper this week about Decker and Skinner and both recruited together, uh, have played together. They, they're teaching right now together, getting their degree. So as that unit gels, they, they had to move Decker to center and make some moves. As that unit has kind of come together, that's a real important factor as well. Again, as we talk about some of the fans' frustrations with the Grizzlies' offense this year, you know, those are factors that people don't necessarily realize. Yeah, John Skinner played tackle last year. Exactly. And he's been moved to guard, and Decker's been moved to center, and, and then moved back to guard. And, yeah, it's been a, a, a change. Green, over the 10, down to the 8. First down. There's no back you'd rather have, obviously, running straight ahead on third and short than Justin Green. You can almost count on it, especially with the lead blocker. Colt Palmer, I believe, in front of him right there does a nice job getting a pat on the linebacker. Justin Green for a first down. Well, we asked Coach Houck what he was going to run if they got to the goal line on second and one, and he <laughs> said, we asked him if we throw a fade pattern this week. He said, I guarantee you we're going to run the ball. That's the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes to go. Montana by six.